Hello everyone. This week for science we are going to learn about producers, consumers, and food webs. So that is what we are going to be talking about in our lessons. The STEM scopes that we are going to go over is in the workbook STEMScopedia. You pick these up already and the pages that it is on or that they are on starts at on page 71. This is on STEMScopedia. Okay, so let's go ahead and begin. <clears throat> so it says, think about the last meal that you ate. Where did the food come from? Maybe it came from the grocery store or a restaurant. Maybe it even came from your backyard. Now think of a lion living, so think of a lion living on the plains in Africa. Where did you where do you think let me try to focus that a little bit. Where do you think his last meal came from? Definitely not the grocery store. Lions have they have to hunt for their food. Okay? But the opposite is that most humans we do not hunt for our food. But humans and lions they have something in common. Both of them eat other living things. In this way, humans and lions have a similar relationship to their ecosystem. Let's look at the definition of an ecosystem. An ecosystem is a community of living and non-living things in their natural environment. Okay? Examples of an ecosystem could be a desert, because in a desert you're going to have a certain type of animal certain types of plants that are only found in the desert. Another example of another ecosystem is the ocean and a forest. All of these have different animals and different plants that are only in those ecosystems. Um, in fact, scientists group living things, that's why they group living, living things based on how they get food. By studying an organism, by studying how organisms get food, scientists understand how energy moves through an ecosystem. So let's look at organism. It is a living thing. And that means all plants and animals are organisms. All plants and animals. Energy um, is what is needed. It is needed to do work or to cause change. Okay. This flow of energy from one organism to the next is called a food chain. What are some types of food in a food chain? What happens if some of these food sources change or disappear? For example, we can start with the sun. And the sun helps grass grow. And then a grasshopper will eat the grass. A snake will eat the grasshopper and maybe a hawk will eat the snake. So what it's saying is what if we take away the grass? Then the grasshopper won't have anything to eat. So that means that everything after the grass, it, some of it may not survive. The grasshopper won't have anything to eat. The snake won't have any grasshoppers to eat. The hawks won't have any snakes to eat. So the food chain, um, it says that what could happen if some of some of these sources change or disappear, it'll change the food chain completely. So what are producers? Um, some living things, they make their own food. Those are producers. And plants are producers. Plants are producers. They use sunlight, water, and gas called carbon di uh, dioxide. And so we're going to put a note here that producers, they make, okay? They make food. Producers are the first organism in a food chain. That's why the grass was first after the sun. But if you don't have sun, the grass won't grow either. So the sun has to be first, and then the first um, item is grass. They provide energy for living things and uh, in the food chain. 
Even though not all animals eat producers, all animals rely on producers to change sunlight into usable energy. Okay? So what are consumers? Many living things, they cannot make their own food. These organisms, they're called consumers. If they don't make their food, where do they get it from? Consumers get energy by eating other organisms. So here on the side, we're going to take a note and we're going to put consumers. They eat. So producers make and consumers eat. Um, there are several different types of consumers. There are herbivores and they eat only plants or other plant-like producers called algae and other consumers they're called carnivores and they eat only other animals and that is meat because that's uh, animals some consumers they eat both plants and other animals and those are called omnivores so let's go ahead and write those down on the bottom. We're going to put herbivores. Take a little bit of notes. They eat plants. Carnivores. They eat meat. And omnivores. They eat both. Okay, so let's look at, on the next page, what do you think? People are, they're not producers because we cannot make our own food. And I'm not talking about cooking at home, I'm talking about like plants. Because uh, they eat all other, they eat the other organisms. Think of things people eat. Uh, what type of consumers are we? So what type of consumers are people? We are actually all types because everybody eats um, some, they eat food so they can eat either plants or animals or they eat both. So people are all types of consumers. Where does the energy come, to, uh, come from that starts a food chain? As one organism eats another, energy moves through a food chain. So the energy, it moves through a food chain. But where does the energy come first come from? The energy that starts a food chain comes from the sun. So this is very important. It starts with the sun. Producers use sunlight to make energy. If we don't have a sun, then the plants won't grow, and then animals won't have anything to eat or the, the smaller animals like insects. Can we make our own food from sitting in the sun? So can we make our own food from sitting in the sun? No, not at all. When a consumer like yourself eats plants, the energy that came from the sun passes into the consumer. When another consumer eats the plant, the energy passes on. So in other words, the sun, it gives energy to the grass, and then the energy that the grass has, it gives that energy to a grasshopper. And then that, say that a mouse ate the grasshopper, sorry, then the mouse is actually getting the energy of the grasshopper, the energy of the grass, and the energy of the sun. So the mouse is getting all of those energies. All right, a food web. So um, in a food web, in a food chain, there comes a flow, f a straight line from one organism to the next, but we're going to talk about a food web because it's a connection of food, change, food chain with many food energy paths in the ecosystem. Okay, so let's look to the next page. And we're going to look at this food web. This is a food web. Okay. Now you see how it always starts with the sun, all right? The first arrow right here, it tells you the first arrow always starts with the sun because it is the source of energy. 
and then it makes algae grow. Let's look at this. So algae is the plant. That's the plant. Okay. Then who eats the algae? Minnows, which is a small fish. Minnows eat algae, but who else eats algae? Insect larvae and snails. So let's look at to, let's look to see who eats the minnows. The bass can eat minnows. So if the bass eats a minnow, it's getting the energy from the minnow, the algae, and the sun. And if the insect larva, the insect larva ate a, the algae, and then the minnow ate it, and then the bass. So if the minnow ate the insect, then the bass got the energy from the minnow, the insect, and the algae. Okay. So we can follow the food chain to see how animals get energy from each other. The try now, if you want to try that at home, you're more than welcome to and you can take a picture and upload it and send it to us or to me. Um, now let's look at ecosystems. How, it, how do changes in an ecosystem affect food web? So changes in an ecosystem. And what this is talking about is that um, if it changes to an, an eco, if there's changes to an ecosystem, it can affect the flow of energy in food webs. In other words, if, um, like here it says, if there's a drought, when this happens, many plants cannot get enough water and they perish or die. So animals that eat those plants are also going to die or they're going to have to move. Events like a hurricane, fires and floods can change an environment and it causes, it causes new organisms to move into or grow in an area. For example, when an area floods, many land animals, they're forced to move. And sometimes they'll just go to another environment. So looking at the future of the golden cheek wa uh, warbler, here, because it's talking about how um, humans have changed this ecosystem, because they're cutting down the trees that it lives that that bird lives in, and it's making the bird extinct. And this bird actually benefits the ecosystem because it eats caterpillars and beetles. And if the bird is not there to eat caterpillars and beetles, then the insect population is going to um, it says that the insects will grow and think about having more insects would change the plants of the forest. Caterpillars and beetles eat the leaves of many different plants. If too many insects live in the area, they will eat away more of the plants. And fortunately, people are trying to uh, work to protect the golden cheek, golden cheek wobbler. Um, and now it lives in a protected national wildlife, wildlife area in Texas. And like it said, it helps keep some balance of the wobbler's food web. Okay? Now, lastly, there is this page. And I would like for you to do this as your assignment. It says that you're going to fill in each box with the correct organism, then label each organism if it's a producer or a consumer. So here is the sun, and I will help you by starting it for you. And the first organism that it starts is with grass. So now you're going to write down who eats grass, okay? And we can cross out grass because we already used it. All right. So I look forward to seeing your, uh, your work, and I hope that you learned about producers, consumers, and food webs.